Hi, I wanted to do a quick video to show how you can do some HDR processing in Photoshop. While I'm going to be using Photoshop today, a lot of the concepts would work in other editing utilities, so hopefully it'll be helpful even if you don't use Photoshop. Here's a photo I took today of a bridge in Philadelphia. Uh, and you can see it's uh, somewhat of a boring, uh, boring shot. Uh, you really don't have any detail under the bridge, it's all just mostly uh, uh, dark and black. And the sky itself is really kind of bland. It's, uh, you can see some clouds, but there's really not a whole lot of color. Uh, so it's really not overall a particularly interesting image. But rather than take just a single image, I actually set up my camera to take five images. Uh, in this case, this is the neutral image, or the default brightness, or the default exposure. And I took two that were darker, so this one is a little bit darker uh, and a little bit darker still. And now you can see while the bridge itself is completely useless or completely washed out in the, uh, in the darker version, we've got some really nice, interesting clouds. Now if I go the other way uh, to the brighter images, you can see that on the, the plus two stop image, I start to get some nice detail under the bridge. And if I go to the plus four stop, maybe it's a little bit too bright, uh, but I can see a lot of all of really nice detail under, under the bridge. But if you look at the plus two stop or plus four stop, while the bridge uh, underneath looks nice, the clouds are completely, completely gone. Uh, and if I look at the, uh, the minus four image, I've got some nice clouds, but no detail whatsoever in the bridge. And that's really the idea of HDR photography, is to try to get the best of both worlds. So you try to get nice clouds and nice uh, shadows at the same time. So I'm going to go through how to do that in, in Photoshop. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. The way I like to do it is to go to the Automate menu and choose Merge to HDR Pro. Uh, and it's going to ask you for uh, some number of images to do. The simplest way is just to add the, all the open files that you, that you have. All right, it's going to think for a minute. All right, it's going to come up with this with this dialog. It's going to give you a few different options. By default, it's going to let you do the HDR uh, editing right in here. This isn't the way that I prefer to do it. Um, you know, again, it, it gives you some options here. Um, I can do a, a surrealistic photo. Uh, it's got a lot of different options. I'll just pick one. Um, you know, I, I don't particularly like like their defaults. I think they look a little bit. Uh, uh, garish in some cases are over over processed. So what we're going to do instead, I want to be able to tone it uh, using the camera raw utility. And so in order to do that, you're going to set this to be a 32-bit image. And basically what it's doing is rather than five separate images, uh, it's creating one image with a tremendous amount of, of dynamic range uh, stored in, in 32 bits. And the one thing that you want to do is click this button to tone in Adobe Camera Raw. So I'm going to click this. This part seems to take a little bit longer than I'd like. Um, it's going to think for a little bit, uh, but once it's done, it's going to open up in the camera raw utility, and it's the same utility that you would use if you were processing raw raw files directly. All right, it's got a, a little bit more to go. All right, great. Now we have the image open in the uh, the camera raw utility, and you can see it looks pretty much the same as the the original neutral image did. Very, very dark under the bridge and very washed out in the sky. And let's kind of go through, uh, I don't claim certainly to be the best expert here, but we can kind of go through and I can show you how, how I do it. In this case, one of the first things that I want to do is to, to make the, the sky a little bit more, more interesting. So the way we do that is with the highlights setting. So I want to bring down the highlights or darken the highlights so that they're a little bit more interesting. And you can see as I bring it down, you know, we start to get some nice, uh, some nice clouds. I'm not going to go quite that far yet. We're going to do a little bit more later. Let's maybe go around 65. But again, you can see now I can start to see a little bit of, of interest and detail in the, in the sky. Uh, and that was with the highlights slider. And I want to do the same thing with the underneath of the bridge. It's way too dark, so I want to brighten that up. And that's done, not surprisingly, with the shadows slider. So we want to brighten the shadows, so let's go ahead and, and brighten that. 
and you can see, you know, if I bring this up to, you know, 80 or 90, you know, we've got a really nice uh, view underneath the bridge, whereas we couldn't see anything before. And let's set that to about, about 90. <coughs> Uh, I usually like to give a little bit of contrast, you know, 10, uh, 10 or so I like. Again, it doesn't make a huge difference, uh, but it is kind of nice. One little trick that's helpful is you can double click on a slider to bring it back uh, to its default, and then click again to, to bring it where it was. Again, very, very subtle, but I uh, do like a little bit of contrast. Uh, another thing that's nice, especially when you're doing architecture, uh, photography, or HDR, I like a little bit of clarity. Uh, this is probably kind of the uh, gives it the HDR look that a lot of people are are either like or don't like. Um, let's start off with just a, a little bit, maybe a 20 or 25. All right, and now you can kind of see it. It adds a little bit of of strength, and it uh, uh, adds a little bit of interest to the uh, to the edges. So I'm kind of show you before and after. So this is with a little bit of clarity. Uh, and without. Again, it, 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 it adds a little bit of the HDR look and you know if I might even just to kind of show the effect I might even go a little bit a little bit stronger in your image you might choose to make it a little bit less uh, uh, less severe. Well, let's add a little bit of color saturation you know not a whole lot in this case 20 or so I don't see a huge a huge difference but it, uh, it does make for a more more dramatic shot. One last thing that I like to do, uh, the image still looks a tad washed out uh, with the blacks. If you hold down the Option key or the Alt key um, and you slide this down, this is going to darken the blacks. And now I can just see in the upper right there that it's starting to saturate some of the blacks. So I'm going to go ahead and stop, stop there. Um, I'll show you the before and after. This is the after and the before. Again, it didn't make a huge difference, uh, but it just tends to kind of uh, uh, make the blacks perfectly black it gives a nicer, uh, a nicer, more dramatic look over overall. So let's kind of show the before and after of what we have. You know, we're starting to get a more interesting image. This is the before. Again, we can't see anything. If I click the after, you know, it's it's a much more, uh, much more interesting, more dramatic, dramatic image. A couple other little things that I'd like to to try. I'd like to try to make the sky a little bit uh, a little bit more interesting yet. One of the things I like to do on the sky is to go in and, uh, especially if it's a blue sky, this was pretty cloudy and gray, so there's not a whole lot of blue, but you can see a little bit of blue here. One thing I like to do is to reduce the luminance of the blue channel. Let's try to reducing that a little bit and see what, see what happens. So maybe reduce it uh, a little bit. And you can kind of see now this little blue uh, s sticks out a little bit more, stands out a little bit more. I'll show you the before and after. You know, there you can see it's mostly white in there. If I turn it on, it, it adds a, a pretty minor, modest, uh, subtle effect. Again, if it were a more blue sky, this would have a much, much more dramatic, uh, dramatic effect. Again, I'm not doing the saturation. I'm doing the luminance to try to darken, darken the, the blues. Uh, but let's try a little bit more uh, to get the sky even a little bit uh, a little bit bolder. One of the ways you can do that is with a graduated filter. Now graduated filter basically are going to uh, uh, start from one edge having no no effect whatsoever. On the other edge of the image it's going to have a full effect. So the idea is that I can uh, darken the sky, not darken the bridge, and then have a subtle trans uh, 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 transition between between the two. In this case, since I want to darken the sky, I'm going to set my exposure. Let it sound set it to about a a quarter stop darker. In addition, I want to uh, lower the highlights a bit, so I'm going to set this to maybe minus 20. We can adjust that later. All right. So basically, what you want to do is is two things. You kind of want to figure out where you're going to start and where you're going to to stop. So I'm going to, and I'll probably get this backwards. Uh, I want to start the uh, uh, start it somewhere up here, and then stop it somewhere around the bridge. And you can kind of adjust where uh, adjust the angle. In this case, I want to adjust the angle uh, so that it somewhat matches up with with the bridge. Uh, so this red point is the point that it stops, and the green point is the point where it has full full effect. All right. So if I make it really really narrow it's going to have a, 
uh, a sharp transition from off to on. I want to make it a little bit more subtle of a transition, uh, so I'll, I'll bring it out a little bit. All right, and then from there you can adjust the, the slider. So again, if I make it really, really dramatic, I've got a very, very bold, bold sky. Maybe that looks a little uh, too fake, so I'll dial it back uh, maybe to, to 20 again or so. And again, I can adjust the overall exposure. But again, I think uh, a quarter stop works pretty well. Uh, this overlay button is nice. It allows you to, to hide the overlay. But again, let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before, and that's the after. Again, a, a, nice, uh, uh, a nice addition to... I'm going to bring that back a little bit. Uh, start a little bit sooner. But again, it made a nice... Uh, a nice difference in the in the sky, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same uh, the same thing on on this side to get a little bit uh, more interest in here. Oops, I got that backwards. All right, so let's do this. Again, so I'm the stop means that I'm not going to darken any of the bridge, but I am going to darken the sky and everything to the right. Again. And I can compare the before and after. That's the after, and that's the before. Again, and it's kind of nice. You can see, uh, you can easily see the difference. And certainly, there's a lot of adjustments that you can make. I went through it kind of quickly, but uh, certainly, you guys can get uh, get an idea. One last thing that I want to do is to maybe lighten up underneath the bridge just a little bit more. Uh, and I'm going to do that with the adjustment brush. Uh, with the adjustment brush, you really kind of paint over the areas that you want to adjust, and it gives you a nice flexibility to decide what you do and don't want to adjust. Uh, so if you use the uh, the left and right brace keys, you can adjust the size. You know, I'm going to go for a, a big-ish size. Uh, the other thing that's important is to uh, adjust the feathering. The feathering controls uh, how sharp the transition is uh, between fully effective uh, between the part that you're adjusting and the part that you're not adjusting. So you can kind of see the inner dark ring is the part that I'm is going to have full effect and then the outer ring is not going to have effect. If I uh, lower the feather, now you can see those two rings get closer together so there's going to be a more harsh transition. Uh, but in this case I want a more subtle transition so I'm going to go something like this. All right, and really what, oh, in this case I want to lighten underneath the bridge so I'm going to set my exposure to plus a quarter stop, and I want to bring up the shadows just a little bit more. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm just going to paint everything under the bridge. It doesn't need to be super exact. All right, I think I've painted most of it. One thing that you can do is if you click this mask button, you can see where you've painted. Not a bad job. So I painted, again, uh, mostly over everything under the bridge. Now let's take a look and see how that, how that did. Again, if I toggle it off and on, all right, again, it's off, uh, and now it's on. And you can see that it did, uh, it did adjust it to make everything just a little bit brighter. I'll show you that again uh, before and after. And again, if you want to tweak those levels a little bit, you click on the, the icon, and again, I can adjust the, uh, the, the brightness to where I want it. Again, I'll keep it a little bit more on the subtle side, maybe 25 or so. All right, and that's, that's pretty close, at least in the, the camera raw side of things. I like this. Again, maybe it's a little bit, uh, perhaps a little bit overdone, uh, but it does kind of give, give the, the nice idea. Again, I'll show the before and after. So that's the original image. And, and after processing. A couple other little things that I'd like to do, and then I will be done. All right, when you bring it into Photoshop, it's going to bring it in as a 32-bit image, uh, and it's going to have, um, uh, have the camera raw kind of listed here in the, in the pane. So if I double-click on it and go back to it, some of the filters aren't going to work or some of the tools aren't going to work when you're in this 32-bit mode. Uh, so one thing I'm going to do is to go ahead and put it back to an 8-bit. Uh, for example, you're not going to be able to save it as a JPEG until you, until you do this. 
So I'm going to bring it down to, to an 8-bit image. It's going to ask me, I'm going to merge all these into a single layer. Now it's going to give me a couple of options when merging it down. It's going to try to give you kind of some HDR-like uh, options here. And you can see this is getting a little bit, uh, a little bit too dramatic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, excuse me, and set it to be the exposure in gamma. When I do that, it's going to go back to the way it was, and I'm going to click OK. All right. So the few things that I'd like to do, one, I want to go ahead and crop this image. Uh, again, this area on the left is probably a little bit uh, unneeded, so I'm going to just crop that a little bit, kind of like that. This area is about the same as, as that, maybe even a little bit more. All right, well, I think I like that. Go ahead and crop it. All right, I think I like that. Uh, I like that cropping. It feels nicely balanced. One thing that I really love to do is to just add a little bit of unsharp mask uh, before before uploading the image. Uh, it just adds a nice little bit of, of sharpness. So I'm going to go ahead and under filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Really, I play with the amount slider. Somewhere between 50 and 100%, I think, tends to, to look good. I think 70 is about uh, a good uh, good amount on this. You know, take a look. Let me zoom in a little bit. Just take a look here. This is the after. If I turn this off, you can see the before. It's it's subtle, certainly, but you can see it looks a little bit fuzzy here in the in the uh, the uh, the structure when I turn it on. It just gets a little bit more more crisp. Again, you don't want it to go too crazy. You know, if I brought it up to here, it's just going to look uh, very unnatural. So again, somewhere in the you know, in the 50 to 100, I think is a good, a good range. A couple last things. Uh, there were a few little imperfections in the image that, uh, uh, that I thought were a little bit uh, distracting. Uh, we've got a bird up here, so let's take a look at, uh, take a look at that guy. All right, so we had a, actually in this case, um, uh, we have the bird as actually in, uh, 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 you can see him three times uh, because of the three, uh, uh, you know, the, the multiple shutters that I, exposures that I took. Uh, and the first step, there's a ghosting setting. Had I turned that on, this would have been just one, one bird instead of three. Um, we're going to go ahead and use the healing brush, and we're just going to paint over the area that we, that we want to get rid of, and Photoshop does a really nice job of, of uh, clearing that out for you. Again, I'm sure we could do a little bit... Uh, more professionally, but uh, unless you were looking there, I don't know that you would ever notice it. And this little bit of, I'm not even sure what that is, paper or something on the bridge, a little bit distracting. So again, I'm just going to, to paint over that, and the healing brush is going to, to get rid of it, maybe get rid of this spot as well. All right, and again, if we turn off this layer, we can see the before and after, before and after as well as the, uh, uh, as the, the birds that were up there. All right, and that's that's about it. Uh, you know, we spent about uh, five or ten minutes, uh, and we're able to to make a, a nice looking uh, HDR image from the five sources. So, uh, thank you very much.